Hello everyone, I'm Kelly Delaney, Director of Partner Development at the Drupal Association. And I'm a new co-host today. Hi, Kelly, and hello, everyone. I'm Prateek Jain, Director of Digital Experience Platform Services at Exhilarate. Thanks for joining me today. And what happened to our old co-host, Nathan Prateek? Well, uh, he's on a short vacation, and I guess this show needed a better co-host alongside you. So here I am. If <laughs> that works. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. And we're your hosts for the show, Beyond the Build, Stories of Drupal Impact, where we are highlighting incredible Drupal use cases and ambitious site builders and end users. Looking forward to it. And uh, who do we have on the show today? Well, we have our partner at the Drupal Association, Lake Drops, and their co-founder, Hergen Haas, and his client, Charlie White, who is a co-founder from Amplius Partners. Yeah, let's have them over here. Hi there. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Hergen. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hey. Hello. Uh, Jurgen, how about you introduce yourself first? Yeah. Hi, Kelly. And hi, Pretty. Thanks for having us today. Uh, I'm really excited to be on the show. Um, I'm Jürgen Haas, co-founder of Lake Jobs, based in Germany, and I started with Drupal about 18 years ago, uh, and I'm a real technical person, so this is already my second career in software development, and we are mainly focusing on backend development, app development, and contributing back to the Drupal community because we just love Drupal and the people working with Drupal. Awesome. Charlie, how about you introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Charlie White. I'm a co-founder, director at uh, Amplius Partners. Uh, we are a negotiation consultancy, so we train and consult commercial teams uh, to improve their negotiation capability, ultimately helping them get more value out of the deals that they do. All right, that's awesome. And Charlie, you have an interesting story about how long ago did you find Drupal and what? how did you get into Drupal? Yeah, so uh, I graduated uh, university in 2004 um, with interactive media production. And while we touched on a little bit of PHP, uh, I left university. I wasn't able to write a single line of code. And to this day, I still can't write a single line of PHP code. Uh, but I obviously I could read it and I can manipulate it, but I, I, I'm not a coder. Um, but I found myself starting a business doing web design. And a few years later, about 2007, when I needed to do something more than just a marketing website, I stumbled across Drupal 5, which um, enabled me to do more. Uh, it enabled me to cut some corners, really. It enabled me to become, uh, sort of pretend to be the back-end developer merging with the front-end, and I could kind of get away with stuff. My career, though, became much more commercial. And in the end, uh, and entrepreneurial, and in the businesses I was involved with, my Drupal journey was using my skill set to create uh, the systems of products we needed in that business at that time. And it was 2018 when we formed Amplius Partners. I've been working with my business partner since 2016. But in 2018, we started uh, Amplius Partners uh, officially. And that's when I started building the system we have today. It's still operating right now uh, on the Drupal 7 platform. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. I think you see, we both seem to have a long association with Drupal, I think, since very early days. Uh, so can you tell us, Charlie, a little bit more about the project that uh, Lake Drops and MPS Partners worked with? Yeah, definitely. So this the system that, uh, that we have, so when we, when we started, we were a very small business. And um, we have effectively run events, which for us are training workshops. And we bring those participants, for us delegates, through that workshop. And rather than just get them on a two or four day workshop, actually, there's a whole bunch of pre-work that we want them to do, forms to fill out, uh, things to read, videos to watch, um, and, and pre-communication that needs to take place. If we do that, we can create much better uh, a, a tailored solution for our clients. And what Amplia specializes in is the consolidation of learning beyond just the learning environment interaction, which could be... Uh, you know, follow-up materials could be uh, more, more, more sort of forms and coaching-based uh, 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 interactions as well as follow-up workshops. So instead of that event being one, two, four days long, we treat it like a 12-month event with sessions in between. And if you imagine that, let's say we've got eight to 12 people running on one workshop, if you've got one human being you know, sending all that communication, gathering all that data and trying to push it through in that 12-month period, 
It was already a difficult task. And today at Amplius, if we run thousands of people through hundreds of workshops per year, that becomes a very expensive, a very large administration team. So what we did is we created this system. Well, I, I effectively created this system that does it all for us. And now today we still use a brilliant admin team and out there second to none, absolutely brilliant. But, you know, to, to run those thousands of people through the system, it's not even one person's full-time job. We choose to use them to have their more personal approach. Um, but that's the system that we've been able to create. Um, ultimately, if they put it on full automation mode, we just need first name, last name, email address, and mm -hmm. 12 months of, you know, hundreds of touch points of communication take place. That's built on Drupal 7. And uh, there's the inevitable migration element from 7 to 8, 9, 10 and beyond. And my value that I bring to Amplius Barnas isn't in development. It's in what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm the single point of failure for this system. So at first we thought, okay, well, we want to rebuild it because it's such a big thing now that it works brilliantly still today on 7. Um, but it needs to be rebuilt. And to do that, my system's heavily built on rules. So uh, a trigger point being a time button or whatever. And as I looked into moving on to Drupal 9, 10, the, f the, the thing that really stood out is ECA, which um, is Jürgen's model, module, Lake Drops module. And it blew me away. But I thought, do you know what? I need some help here. So I went straight to the, the builder, went straight to Jürgen, lent on the Drupal community, which has always been brilliant for, for my development. Like I say, I can't write code. I rely on the community, give back what I can. Right. And Jürgen and I had a discussion about, well, you know, help me with ECA. And it became a very much, well, using a, a, a well-known negotiation analogy, um, well, we could slice the pie up. I, I give you Jürgen money, he gives me expertise, and I'd maybe create a new system that I can use. Or we build a bigger pie, uh -huh. which means, actually, what's the value in the system? The value is the intellectual property, which I and Amplius can bring. What value can Jürgen bring and his team at Lake Drops? Amazing Drupal development. And isn't there a better thing to be done where we can kind of merge these things together? And rather than think about just rebuilding it, could Amplius Partners be the first client of a new organization that actually could provide this as a new business, new system to other events-based organizations, not just training, but other things. Okay. So imagine if it works for Amplius, it could work for others. That, that, that's, that's, that's how, in a long-winded way to answer your question, that's how <laughs> Jürgen and I got together. That's amazing. I could totally see that your motivation with that. So you actually, Charlie, found Jurgen in Lake Drop. So Jurgen, when he came to you, was this whole plan, did he pitch you on this already or did you guys come to it together to form the larger, the larger part of the project together? Well, it started off with a simple question whether we are prepared to provide um, professional services uh, on a paid basis. And of course, yeah, that was the intent on why we built the module like ECA in the first place. Uh, for us, it's kind of our sales department providing free and open source modules. Um, and then people like Charlie and other clients find us instead of us reaching out and trying to convince customers to pay us for services. So that started really well, and we have been prepared for that. But during the first couple of sessions, there was something that struck me in my mind and didn't let me go to sleep. Like, in Charlie's situation, was it the right move to actually migrate an existing system that really works absolutely brilliantly. But how far do we get if we migrate that over to Drupal 8, 9, or 10? How much technical depth do we carry with us? Right. But, but or what would be the alternative to say, take all his experience and knowledge and uh, knowing what he needs, in a business case and build a system from scratch doing exactly the same thing 
but with a software design which is just made for the new world of the modern Drupal environment, right? Um, and I just thought, let put that idea into the ring, and Charlie picked it up, and he just seemed to like the idea, and then a few days later came and said, oh, we need to leverage that idea. Let's see what we can do out of that. So that is how the original intent was different. And in the middle of the project, we both learned that there is an alternative way that we could do things more effectively and with an even better result uh, in the end. Okay, that's interesting, uh, Hirgil. And so what were, what were some of those challenges, right, if you had stuck with Drupal 7 to 8, 9, 10 migration versus rebuilding it from the scratch, right? I mean, I know you, you briefly mentioned about the design adapting to the modern needs, but then can you, can you touch upon a little bit more on that? Everything starts with a data model, right? Charlie's company, Amplius Partners, they are dealing with a lot of data points. And building the database structure for all of that data is a challenge in itself. If you start small, like let's say 10 years ago, he started on Drupal 7. His requirement was smaller than today. He started with maybe uh, delegates, courses, uh, PDF documents, and video links. Right. And over a period of time, that data model grew almost every day. It became more complex. And it was driven by the possibilities that Drupal 7 back then allowed him to do. Now, with modern Drupal, we have much more powerful data models on how we can link things together. And I keep saying to all of my clients, look, building an internet application is very much like building a house. If you get the foundation wrong, your house will not last for very long. The very same applies to internet applications, like the data model is like the foundation of, of a house, right? If the data model is not right, you always have to do tricky things to get to your goal. And that was the opportunity in this project to say, look, we have all your experience, we have all your data, we have all your legacy. How about building from scratch with the most modern possibilities that Drupal provides now and never did in the past, not to that extent that it does today. I think also because Amplius can answer that question slightly differently and why not just carry you know, migrate from seven. I think there was always a, you know, an appetite to start again because we'd realized that I keep coming back to the intellectual property of the system. We'd realized actually, yeah, realize this, actually. this is doing something brilliant, but you know, imagine if it was you know, built built with those great foundations that you open talks about. Because if you, uh, I repeat, you know, my value I bring to Amplius isn't in the systematic design, though it, it has become part of what I do, a big part of what I do. My value is in front of our clients, and we work globally, so traveling around the world to be with those clients. And so, um, yeah, it when it was when Jürgen and I and his team and my, obviously my team as well uh, are starting getting together and thinking about it and it it, it 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 became much a much bigger thing and it can only be achieved with you know um you know getting that data model exactly right but also uh, you know it, it, as amply as grows as a business you know that's uh, the single point of failure which was me can no longer be you know it, it doesn't need for me you know a co-founder director of the business to go in and change something if it's built right, the team can do that from the user interface. Right, right. So Charlie, was this also an opportunity for you or the team who is managing or inputting these data points into the system, right, to improve the experience for them and add more functionality to the system because there was a new rebuild now, obviously the new data models were there. And um, uh, how, how much of that was uh, your, your focus? Yeah, well, if you think, so you think about a workshop for us, it's kind of like a template. There's a load of sessions that make up the event, that 12 month event. And so, as I say, you know, pre-work, a pre-call, a workshop, a post-workshop uh, call, some more, uh, you know, all those touch points in that 12-month that basis. And as that template is there, the team don't need me at all to 
to to to to run a workshop, let's say, you right. input the data and, and and manage the delegates through that process. But it's when it became the point where ah, uh, you know, that the one of these dozens of uh, documents or whatever it is that we give that needs to change. Charlie, can you do that? Well, you can, but he's also with a client for this next week and uh, you won't be around whatever actually there's other stuff that needs to be done so I'll have to wait what we want to achieve in terms of that functionality that you mentioned uh, Pratik is you know if Yoga's team and and with uh, with uh, with us as architects let's say create the system so that it doesn't need a any not even not a developer but certainly not even a a Drupal guy I don't know if that's what I'm called (laughs) but I'm not a developer a Drupal guy who obviously knows Drupal well enough to build that system. It doesn't need that. It has the user, the interface to say, I want to build something new and change this thing here, and, and it does it. I think Richard Jürgen used the term just last week when we were talking about something, and he said, um, um, a- a- enabling the user to do Drupal stuff without knowing they're doing Drupal stuff. Did you say yeah. something like that? I think it was that. Yeah. Which is exactly what we want to achieve. Okay. Yeah, the, 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 that, that's so interesting and pleasing to hear, right? I mean, Drupal has always been like that where... It has been seen as uh, a technical CMS, but then now, now seeing this use case where Charlie, you and your team, who doesn't even need to know the Drupal or Drupal admin interface, right, can can use the platform is really uh, good to know. So you get on that, right? And I think uh, you already uh, we briefly touched upon it as well. But coming to that again, right? So how did you build this new system, uh, and keeping in mind that this could be a SaaS solution in the future for the other clients as well? Like, were there any technical designs or the changes? What, what were some of the major considerations around that? Well, first of all, I think we started with uh, a number of sessions where we just had a whiteboard, uh, sheets of papers, uh, and did a lot of brain work, really, um, to distill the major component out of Charlie's brain on, you know, what's needed really to to build the solid solution that runs that complex workflow uh, that his company is involved with. And then and that leads towards, and that's a great question, therefore, how much does the software as a service requirement drive the decisions on how to architect the whole solution? And this is really important because the data model is one of the foundations but keeping in mind that a product like that has the life cycle, right? So there will be continuous updates. There will be new major versions of Drupal. There will be new database systems in the life cycle of that product. So we're talking about 10 or 20 years ahead of us. So we have quite some experience on how to build frameworks on top of Drupal that allow us to continuously upgrade everything and automatically and really, really regularly. And that is what we want to achieve. Like if we have eventually hundreds or maybe at some time thousands of clients, there is no way on earth that we could be hands-on keyboard uh, in actually doing the updates. So that was a very important thing. How can we build the main product such that it applies to all current and future customers, but at the same time allows for Amplius partners to actually build their own content model inside of that product as well. Because if Amplius is providing training courses, the content and the data model of their training courses is most likely absolutely different from all the other training companies in the world. Exactly. So the tricky piece was to build a product which is unchangeable by the end user later on and allow for space for customization that the customer can do themselves without our help. Well, if they need to, we are happy to help, but we don't want to build the service company for that. We want to be a software company that provides a product that people can use independently. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I think I said, you know, if Amplius Partners is the first client for this this new system and it works as we expect, then we're going to be in great shape because it, it, it's, it, we, it, it's, it's an events management system, events and delegate management system. And if that becomes federated where the, because the client accesses our system, they just have a different user experience than the delegate. 
the client has real time data like feedback, like attendance levels. You know, we check and even if they've seen a PDF, yes or no. And so on a table at a glance during a workshop, they can see, well, what's the engagement level? I mean, it's always high, but it helps helps them on their process. And if they have a if they're part of the federation on this system, then that, that ecosystem grows bigger, obviously, not just with Drupal, but you know, the the, the, ben, the benefit there is clearly obvious to see for us as, as uh, in what we're, we're trying to achieve. But the last thing I'll say is quite a fun one, which is in my world at Amplius, this has always been like, I'm Jürgen and my admin team, and I say they're brilliant, but they're like me now. <laughs> and now it's, you're kind of thinking, well, hang on. Um, I thought we're going to make this system that doesn't just work for me. And that's like, hang on a minute. I've been selfish for so long. I just want it to work just for me. <laughs> and it, it will work for me, but it's got to work for others. And it, it's just releasing that a little bit and saying, yeah, um, I, I'm not Charlie anymore. That's Jürgen and his team. <laughs> if you see what I mean, it's just, a, yeah. it, 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 as we're building it, that, that that's one thing that is it's not challenging. It's quite good fun, but it's just different. It's different for us. It's hard to let go to something you know so well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Based on that, though, so Jurgen, you mentioned, well, you both mentioned that this there's more use cases for this. If there, our audience is a lot of um, people evaluating Drupal as a CMS. What, do you, are you have any ideas of other use cases that this could work for? Yeah, can I go? Can I can I can I take that one quickly? Sorry, Jurgen, I just That's excited about the subject. Uh, yeah, go on. <laughs> th think about this. So, for how it works for us. So. We're taking a load of information from the delegates as they, as they arrive. And, and if it's a face-to-face -face workshop, they're going to stay in a venue uh, together. So, for example, we take the dietary requirements. Why do we do that? Because if we know the venue and we have the contact to the venue connected to the system, which they are, at a certain point, the trigger happens and the, the venue gets the information that these eight delegates are coming. These are the four different dietary requirements. So when they eat, they can have them. That they, they can be catered for. That happens systematically. But if you then think about an event management company, our event is a three-day workshop, say, and a load of stuff happens prior to that, like communicating with other people. Imagine a big event, you know, they're going to have the client who's running the event, but they're also going to connect, let's say, the security team who are going to most likely want their security badges, which they could you know, be provided. And we can check, have they seen them? Yes, have they downloaded whatever it is? Uh, they're going to connect to the catering department themselves and not just for dietaries but for uh logistical information they're going to connect to the, the music team or whatever it is you know the the dj whoever it is and, and that federated system that just it takes care of the event sorry jürgen the question was directed to you but uh, it, it, off the cuff you know that's that's a great use case for an events management company let's say yeah and i think that leads towards who might be potential clients of that new system like uh everybody who is organizing uh, or providing training courses. There are so many companies in the world doing exactly that. But as Charlie mentioned before, while we were architecting a new system, we learned that training courses are not far away from what events are actually all about. And if we talk about events, an example that we always use is DrupalCon. Um, that's why I have the DrupalCon <laughs> shirt on today. Like, I only have a very brief idea on how complex it might be to organize a DrupalCon. Kelly, you know that much <laughs> better than anyone else. Yes. Because you are part of that team every year, mm -hmm. once or twice, maybe three times from now on. Um, and it is really, really difficult. There are so many people involved. Uh, talk about speakers, talk about co-speakers, talk about volunteers service providers, uh, cleaning companies, the venue, catering, and so on and so forth. Each and every one of them is a potential client of this new system. And this is how we build it in itself as a sales engine as well, because we call it a federated platform, which means, let's say, the Drupal Association were a client of that system to organize DrupalCon you would get an instance of that solution that you can use and brand towards, uh, you know, Drupal Association. But what if you have a security company that you hire to work with you on that event? So they would get not only user accounts on that platform, 
to be part of DrupalCon, but they would get their own instance of that same system and at that level free of charge because they can use it then internally to organize their own team with all the detail, which is not relevant to the Drupal Association, but to them. And eventually that security company, just as an example, is involved in probably dozens of events at the same time. So they want to aggregate all the event management in their own instance for their own calendaring, planning, resource planning, as allocation, and so on and so forth. But each of their clients running events would hopefully be interested in how they are doing that and get a free license as well to use it to organize their own event. So this starts to grow out from one client who has maybe five service providers. Each of them have five clients themselves. So we are suddenly with 25 instances that are going to be installed. And while we call the system or the framework a federated system, that means that each participant has only that data on their own instance, which is relevant for them. So the security company does not have all the content about DrupalCon because they don't need that. They only have those events that are important to them, like when is opening time, who is going to be at the front door, and so on and so forth. So that's the idea behind on how that should grow. Yeah, well, that that's really and interesting. Yes. I mean, um, type up, tell you a thing, something. No, just the last thing on that is, you know, for, you know, real use case for us was um, one of our biggest clients, a carb name. Um, they once called us and said, hey, you know that system you use? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of your competitors who we work with, we want them to use it. Can you get them to use your system? <laughs> I'd love to have a conversation about it. Yeah. Um, but. We're not, we weren't here where we are today, so you know, there's appetite for it. But Jürgen very eloquently described what could happen. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Charlie and Jürgen, I think, I think these were some really important and the complicated goals that you had to achieve and then while building the system and all, right? Uh, I think I already know the answer, but I'm still going to ask it to both of you, right? I mean, did you ever consider moving to a different technology? I mean, like what made you stick with Drupal? Did you just for a little bit consider, I know you covered a bit already about the permissioning system, configurability, extensibility, data models, and a lot more, right? But still, did for a bit, did you consider any other technology apart from Drupal? Uh, there is no way. You know, there is no other system that could do it as well as Drupal. And I'm not saying that because I love Drupal. Well, I'm saying that as well because I love it. But there are, you know, the capabilities of Drupal are huge. And at the same time, the quality of the software, the stability, the uh, extendability, the uh, innovation level that we see day in and day out in Drupal is just unique. I don't think there is another platform on Earth which comes anywhere near to what Drupal can do in that regard. Uh, yeah, and for me, uh, um, I don't know, a million things I could think of in my head, but... I once did a marketing website to somebody and I based it on Drupal. It had a few things going on with it, scheduling and stuff. And in the end, she said, I, it, it, you know, it, it, she wanted it changed and that's fine. She asked me to use a different system because nobody uses Drupal. I don't know. It's got a bit of a bashing at times. I think that that's, that's what it is. Um, but the thing I would say is somebody who says, you know, I can't write code. Uh, and yet here we are, um, you know, with this, this system, I would say, no, it's what I know. Um, but if you're someone like me and you're sort of thinking about it and dabbling in it, you know, lead on the community. Uh, the Drupal community has provided immense amounts of value for me personally mm. and for the businesses I've been involved with throughout my life, particularly Amplius Partners. Um, if you just lead on that, actually, you know, take a little bit of time to, to get into it. You, you can achieve things that, that are not possible uh, uh, that w without... Without that, and without the the the, the ability to, the trooper gives somebody like me, so no. Uh, and as I say, <laughs> when we come to rebuild it, a conversation with Jurgen and here, look, we're, we're talking about something completely different than than. Um, hey, how did you 
how did you pay Jurgen to do some stuff? It's uh, <laughs> it's 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 it's, uh, it's it's mushroomed and grown out grown out of control. Thank you so much. And Jurgen, I have one more question for you. Um, Lake Drops is a Drupal certified partner, which means that you your team contributes a lot of code enough to be gold level. And you're not the biggest company out there, but you're very high on the certified partner list as a gold. We thank you for that. But I wanted to ask, can you share a few tips for organizations to engage more and contribute back to the community? Yeah, sure. I love to talk about that, really, because this is comes very close to our heart at Lake Drops. There are two things, essentially. We try to avoid writing custom code in any of our projects. If there is a client asking for new functionality that's not available in Drupal or in Contrib space yet, we are happy to develop that. But if we negotiate with our clients, the first thing we always do, and I recommend all the other agencies doing the same thing, we ask the clients, say, look, we build that for you. You determine the budget, what's worth it, what's it worth for you. But we do that from day one in, as an open source uh, module and publish that on Drupal.org. Why are we doing that? Well, and we learned that with ECA. Uh, ECA is a huge module. We spent more than 3,000 hours in the first year of development. But that was not only us. It was partly paid by a client. Um, but we were joined only two months after the beginning of the development by another company with a very similar requirement. And they had budgeted themselves as well and developers. So we joined forces with them, developed ECA together. We, on our own, we would have required probably twice as long. And if we did it only for our client, all the other people in the Drupal community wouldn't have ever learned about it. But the way that we made it public meant that others saw what we are doing and were able to join. And this is where the double benefit to our client comes in as well. Suddenly, they don't have to fund all of the development themselves. There are others who are partly funding that too. And not only the initial development, but also the ongoing development. This is now a public module for over two years. Um, and there are hundreds of people being engaged in ECA, discussing on how to move it forward, in reporting bugs, fixing bugs, helping each other, and so on and so forth. And the second advice, what we always do, if there is a customer project, you always run into bugs, either in Drupal Core or in a contrib module that you use. And always, without exception, when we find a bug, we always open an issue on Drupal.org. We never fix a bug only for a client that we currently work for. And guess what? Every single time we earn credits that brought us to the gold level of the uh, partner program and without any extra effort because we are solving that problem anyway. Why not solving it always on the public platform? You know, everybody wins. And we have been doing that for at least over 10 years. And it's fun. It, it's really fun. And it helps everybody. And we get recognition for it. And this is, I keep saying, this is our sales department in late drops, which we don't have one. Um, our contribution is building our reputation. And that's, this is how we get new business. Yeah. It's that easy. Uh, isn't that the one of the most amazing thing about Drupal and the Drupal community, right? I mean, all of us coming together as agencies, as individuals for a bigger good, right? So uh, yeah. there you go, right? Uh, I just have one other question. So, and this could be for both of you again. Uh, do you have any advice for our audience who might be looking to implement something which is of a similar size and scale? Uh, any, any broad recommendation that you both of you may have? That's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kept it for the last. <laughs> yeah, you know, what made this project from the very beginning so attractive was from our point of view as a service provider, we had Charlie as a client at the beginning, 
now we are partners, but we had a client who was able to ask the right questions on what they need, how they need it, and how it should be implemented. This is a rare situation for us, because very often we have clients, they know how to run their own business, but they have no idea how to ask questions about functionality they need in their project, because they can only think within the boundaries of their own experience, right? And that's the advice I would like to give to researchers of Drupal, like come to the table with an open mind and allow for the idea that there is a completely different approach to your solution compared to what you have in mind when you come and look for Drupal or something else. Yeah, that's a great advice. But then you need people who can listen and understand and talk to you and challenge you on certain areas. But if you go through a process like that with the right partner, uh, it should be a fun ride. I think you said it really well. I think I've been in Jürgen's shoes, obviously not to the extent that he is, but you know, effectively I'm building something for a client. And they don't know what it is. Now we're in a fortunate position that you know we, we have kind of both sides of the table covered in in our partnership. But my advice to somebody coming into Drupal is is definitely you know get the, the get the, the the developers get the team someone like Jurgen Steve gets someone like Lake Drops to teach you how to be a good client. And uh, that, that that was that actually came from some work I did with a. Uh, another organization based in the UK and I'm, I'm meeting the uh, the owner in a few months a few weeks to time to, to just catch up personally but you know being a good client is a good thing and you've got to be open-minded you know that sort of we always used to say it's the one the one page a one a4 sheet in word that's can you build that yeah no <laughs> <laughs> you know you you, 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 you you've got to get into the detail uh, but I've, I think I said it earlier my, my advice to someone who wants to use Drupal you know lead on the community and, and get stuck in you can't break anything give it a go learn a little bit about it take some time to do that and um, things start to unlock pretty quickly in my experience of, over the years in terms of what's possible and I just want to say this it, it, Jürgen's dead right in terms of the sales department you know that module ECA brought us together and you know obviously I've seen a lot of modules over the years and ECA is absolutely mind blowing and I'm Jürgen has not paid me to say that it is <laughs> it is it's brilliant it's you know that it's some modules like a triple seven you need views okay yeah. um you have rules it, it, for me ECA is it's up there and it's the, the usership's going through the roof but if you're into Drupal but just check that out it, it's it's it lets you do some really cool stuff yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I haven't tried the module myself, but I will definitely check it out. Uh, that's some great advice from both of you. Uh, so thank you, Virgin and Charlie, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. No, it's been great. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah thanks for having me. Uh, well, I would like just to sign off and say thanks again, everyone, for joining us on Beyond the Build. And if you would like to be on our show, email us at partnerships at association.drupal.org. See you next time. Mm -hmm.